Hello, my name is Carrie. If you have been with us throughout this series, you will be familiar with the different topics that we have been covering. Today we're going to take a look at some of the things we've already focused on and the importance of getting things right in the home and school environment. If you remember back to video one, when we talked about the sensory world and how even before we leave home in the morning, we can be bombarded with sensory experiences that can at times overwhelm us. As occupational therapists, we know that the different environments that we are in during the day play such an important part in how we cope each day and how we are able to participate in everyday activities. Let's think about the school environment. For the majority of children, school is a happy place, full of friends, fun, activities, adventure, with a lot of people around. Most children can go about their school day happy, they can concentrate with background noise, can play happily in crowded playgrounds and eat their meal in a busy dinner hall with no difficulties. But for some children, this is often not the case. Think about the child with additional needs, perhaps, who already, before even arriving at school, has had to cope with smells, tastes, touch of clothes, close proximity to others, busy roads with a lot of things to see. We are going to now meet Sophie. Sophie goes to school each day. It is a place where she has to sit for a long time and can get into trouble for fidgeting. It is a place that makes her stand in a line for a long time when all she wants to do is jump up and down and move around. It is a place where she has to eat dinner in a hall that is full of strange smells where she has to sit on a stool with her legs dangling beneath her and try and eat the food when there are echoes all around her. Here's Sophie now. It's a place where there's a big playground where other children run around me fast and sometimes they crash into me. Some of the children even scream in high voices when they are playing. Sometimes I like to run fast and I also crash into people. But because I do this often, I get told off and I don't really know why as it's something that helps me. It's a place that has different toilets to the ones I use at home which make me a bit frightened. It smells different and I get scared in case I lock myself inside. That was Sophie who was able to describe some of the difficulties she experiences in the school environment. Some of your children may not be able to describe what they are going through or experiencing. So I want you to take a moment and think about your child's classroom or school environment. How do you think it makes your child feel? Is it too busy? If you are a teacher or a senko listening to this, is there anything that you could do to make it a smarter learning environment for the children? Let's think about the home environment now. Home is, is a place that we all like to go to feel safe and secure, but it isn't always like this. At home, it isn't always calm and quiet. Instead, it can sometimes feel a bit overwhelming or scary. At times, home can be like school, loud, disorganised and busy. There can be lots of people in my home at one time and there isn't any opportunity for my body to learn to cope. I don't have time to slow down and calm down. Instead, we're always on the go. The TV is always on and I never have the chance to really practice my skills that I know I can achieve by myself. We are always rushing everywhere. There is no space for me to do my schoolwork so I just sit on my iPad instead. I struggle to go to sleep at night because my mind is racing. I don't feel relaxed. My room is busy with things stuck on the wall or busy with toys that belong to my brother and sister. Again, some of your children may have some difficulty with expressing these difficulties. So I want you to think about your home environment now. Do you use a loud or a high pitched voice? Is the TV always on in the background? Are there any opportunities for you or your child to have any quiet time? 
And do your children spend most of their time on their iPad or playing on computer games, which then make it hard for them to sleep at night? We want you to be the detective. You as parents and teachers know your children best. You know what their sensory preferences are and how these may need to be accommodated in the environment which you live and learn in. As occupational therapists, we always want to, be, to support you in considering the environment as a contributing factor. One of the models used is the person environment occupation model. As you can see in the di model diagram, the environment has a direct impact on how your child is able to perform their everyday occupations. The environment, along with the child's sensory preferences, likes and dislikes, as well as the functional occupation, all play a role in how your children will be able to perform a task or occupation. Therefore, depending on what you are asking your child to do, we may have to think about, for just that activity, what we can do to change the environment that they are in. Some examples of this. If you want your child to read at home or in school, consider moving to a quieter part of the room where it is just you and your child. Consider the table that they are sitting in. Is it too big? Or is your child able to sit comfortably so that they are able to focus just on that reading? Sometimes it may also be okay for the environment to be a bit busier. An example of this is when you visit a soft play centre. If this is something that your child is motivated by, you may be able to support them in appropriately and safely engaging in the different obstacles and attractions by structuring the time that they are there for, in the form of obstacle courses or using countdowns. Meal times may be tricky for some children. This can often be when the environment is bombarded with a variety of different sensory experiences, including smells, colours, noises and tastes. If you make sure your child is sitting supported with their feet on the floor, perhaps in the quieter section of the dining hall, in order to support them feeling calm, they may be able to eat by themselves. These are just a few examples of how the environment can play a role in how your child is able to engage and participate in everyday activities. In the final video of the series, we will explore this model further and how the three components, namely the person, the environmental and the occupational factors can contribute to how your child is able to perform functional activities.